Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about the annual summer cover crop, buckwheat. We'll be talking about some of the basics of buckwheat, some of the pros and cons, why you might wanna start incorporating it into your food plot routine. And at the end, we'll also talk about this particular stand of buckwheat, how we planted it, what's our plan for it, and one of the challenges that we might be facing uh, going forward with this stand and what you can do to avoid it. So. What is buckwheat? Buckwheat is one of the many cover crops, meaning that it's something that you plant in your food plot when you're not planting something else. So if you are planting soybeans or if you're planting corn, those will be growing during the summer so you would not be planting buckwheat. But if you're preparing the site for more of an annual fall food plot, buckwheat might be something that you'd want to plant. And so let's go over some of the reasons that you might want to be planting buckwheat. So buckwheat is unique in the fact that it grows really tall, really fast. It puts on a lot of biomass very quickly. And because it grows really fast, it actually chokes out almost all the other vegetation within the stand. So if I were to look around within this particular stand of buckwheat and kind of peel back the buckwheat and look at the ground, I don't see a whole lot of other vegetation. It's, it's primarily buckwheat. Towards the sides of the stand, maybe towards the back here or by the camera, where the sunlight is able to kind of filter through, there are a few weeds. But within the stand itself, I would say it's 95% buckwheat. So not only is buckwheat a cover crop, it's also what's called a smother crop, meaning it's gonna smother out anything else in the area. As the plant grows and reaches maturity, it creates such a dense canopy that sunlight cannot hit the ground. So really the only thing that can grow within a stand of buckwheat is buckwheat. This is a huge benefit because it really helps you with weed control. If you're someone that's not comfortable using herbicides or you simply do not want to, Buckwheat is a great option to keep your food plots weed free going into the fall. Another huge benefit to buckwheat and probably the main reason people plant buckwheat is for improving your overall soil health. Like we said earlier, buckwheat puts on a lot of biomass very quickly. So when we terminate the crop, everything you see around me is gonna be put back into the soil, whether you're rolling it, crimping it, taking a brush hog to it, all that buckwheat is gonna go back into the soil and help build your organic matter. So let's say you're someone that has really sandy soil and you can't really grow much of anything. I would recommend planting buckwheat throughout the summer because over time you're gonna build layers of organic matter. It's not gonna happen overnight, it's not gonna happen in a single season, but if you have sandy soil and you plant buckwheat for three to five years, you're going to build a ton of organic matter. Now, I will say this, if you have really sandy soil, the one thing you do not want to do is till the buckwheat in because all you're gonna be doing is flipping that buckwheat deeper into the soil and pulling sand back to the top. So you wanna make sure that you are not disturbing the soil too much. You can lightly disc the buckwheat in. I would not till the ground, nor would I put on a lot of weight onto the disc. Just, just lightly disc the buckwheat back in, roll it down, crimp it down. Uh, you do not wanna be disturbing the soil because you wanna be building that organic matter. You don't wanna be flipping over that sand right back to the top. Another nice thing about buckwheat is because it grows so fast, you often can get two plantings in, in during a single growing season. So let's say you're able to plant in late May, early June, you can terminate that crop of buckwheat in late June, early July, plant again, and then terminate it again in late July, early August, just in time to plant your fall food plot. So the two main reasons to plant buckwheat would be to suppress weeds and to also improve your soil health with all the organic matter you're putting back into the ground. Now, there are a few things that you need to watch out for with buckwheat, and so these are kind of like the negatives. And they're not really negative, they're just things you want to make sure that you know about buckwheat before you plant it. Uh, the first is buckwheat is not frost tolerant. So what that means is when you're planting buckwheat for the first time, that you're well clear of that last frost date. Here in lower Michigan, I probably want to be waiting until Memorial Day to be putting my buckwheat down. And that'll still give me two rotations of the crop. I can, I can grow it throughout June, terminate, grow throughout July, terminate, plant my fall food plot. And again, because buckwheat is not frost tolerant, it does not make a good fall food plot seed. Although deer will eat it throughout the summer, depending on what's growing in your area, I would not recommend planting this in a fall food plot mix. As soon as you get that first frost in the fall, it's gonna kill your buckwheat. So because it's not frost tolerant and it would likely choke out everything else in your food plot mix, I would not recommend planting this in a fall food plot. Another thing that you wanna make sure you're, you're watching out for with buckwheat is the seeding rate. The ideal seeding rate for buckwheat is around 50 pounds per acre. Uh, we use 50 pounds for this area right here. It's just under one acre. And as you can see, we got a great catch and we have pretty much a pure stand of buckwheat. However, it did come in a little bit too thick. 
uh, because we went a little heavy on the seed. And this is gonna be totally fine for what we're planning on doing. However, there's a lot of guys that want to broadcast their false food plot blend into the standing buckwheat and then crimp it down or roll it down. And one thing you need to make sure you're watching out for is if your buckwheat is too thick, when you terminate the buckwheat by crimping it down, that's gonna create a really thick mulch layer. And those tiny brassica seeds, those tiny clover seeds, don't have enough energy to break through that thick mulch layer. So you could end up smothering your fall food plot. And that's definitely not something that you wanna do after you spend all that money on seed. So just kinda of keep an eye out for how thick the stand is, and you might have to make a judgment call to what, how you're gonna terminate that stand. And kind of along the same lines of smothering your fall crop with buckwheat, one thing you need to make sure you're doing is terminating your buckwheat at the appropriate time. And what I mean by that is making sure that you're terminating the crop before it goes to seed. And how you know it's gonna start going to seed is about two to three weeks after you first start seeing flowers within your stand of buckwheat. And I believe that this particular stand started flowering about five weeks after we seeded, and it is about seven weeks today from when we seeded. So it is exactly two weeks after it started flowering. So right now we're actually running the risk of when we terminate this crop within the next couple days, we're gonna have volunteer buckwheat seeds coming up within our fall food plot. And if that happens and we get another stand of buckwheat just like this, before the first frost, it, it could potentially choke out and kill our fall food plot blend. And that is the exact opposite of what we want to happen. So definitely make sure you're keeping an eye on your buckwheat when it starts flowering and just, just make a note that when you start seeing flowers on your buckwheat, you got about two to three weeks before it's gonna go to seed. I, I would do it at two weeks. I would not risk it going to seed because if, if it starts coming up in your fall food plot, you're gonna run the risk of it choking out your fall food plot. So it, it's just not worth it. It's better to terminate it early than terminate it late. So that actually brings us to this stand of buckwheat right here. Like I said, it's been seven weeks to the day that we, that we uh, planted this buckwheat, and it's been two weeks to the day since it started flowering. So we are right at that time when we need to terminate the crop. And so we'll kind of go over how we planted this particular stand and what our plans are going forward. So before we planted this particular stand, there was a couple of things I wanted to address. It was, it was relatively rocky, it was really uneven, there was a lot of ruts. So to plant this particular stand of buckwheat, we did till the ground, we, we seeded at about 50 pounds per acre, we did not cult a pack, we did not drag over top, we simply tilled and spread the seeds. So even though we didn't do it with this particular stand, because buckwheat is a, is a larger seed, I would recommend you run a drag over after you seed to cover those seeds, because if you don't have rain in the immediate forecast, you're gonna have all kinds of critters coming in here and eating that seed. Um, that's what's one thing that we ran into uh, closer to our house with chickens. Every time, every time I seed something close to the house, they see me throwing down those seeds. And if I don't run a drag over it right away, those chickens are gonna come out there and eat all the seeds. And that is one thing I would recommend you doing is taking a drag and, and covering your seeds. Now our, our plan for this particular stand of buckwheat, we're not gonna crimp it, we're not gonna roll it. We're actually gonna mulch it up and lightly disc it back into the soil uh, for one of two reasons. One, because again, I said we planted this a little bit thick, so I'd be worried about if I planted my fall food plot within this stand and rolled it, that those small brassica seeds and those small clover seeds wouldn't have enough energy to break through that thick mulch layer. So that's the first reason why we're not gonna roll this. The second reason is, is because we, we are kind of getting closer to that time where when we do terminate the stand, that it could reseed itself. And again, the last thing I wanna do is terminate this, plant my fall food plot, and have the buckwheat come up with the fall food plot and smother it out. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be mulching it down, lightly disking it in, waiting for rain. This buckwheat germinates very, very quickly. So we will know immediately whether or not there's gonna be any buckwheat seeds coming up. And if there are, we'll come through, we'll spray one time, and then we'll seed right after that. So that's, that's the plan for this particular stand. So guys, hopefully that answers a lot of the questions on buckwheat. You know, what, what are the positives? You know, some of the things to watch out for, uh, why you might want to incorporate it into your food plot routine, and then a kind of a real life example of, um, of how we put this one in and you know, some of the challenges that, that we might be facing going forward with this. But if you guys do have any questions, I know we didn't cover everything on buckwheat, uh, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I will get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.